Hi everyone, just wanted to check in with everybody and see how everyone's doing. I have my assistant here with me and um, hopefully she's going to behave. I hope everyone's staying safe and is healthy um, and is looking at their computers and checking what work we have put up for you. Um, I just want you to know that we can check to see how much time you spent on different things like um, STEM scopes and Discovery Ed. Um, I ready, would you know that already? Um, so we can tell if you're if you're really looking at it or just glancing at it and jumping off. So so do your best. Um, this isn't the easiest of times and um, things aren't normal or regular, but we'll get through this and we just want you to um, to do what you can with the work that we give you. Um, I have a little list here so I don't miss anything. So soon everyone's going to have a computer. Um, so you'll be able to access everything that, that we suggest. So I hope you um, take advantage of um, doing all those activities that we post. There's also some fun things that um, I've posted for um, a daily DE. It's through Discovery Ed. Um, and it's all about STEM activities for each day of the week. So it looks kind of cool and I think it'll be something interesting to um, to be thinking about, not necessarily about our topic, motion and force, but um, about STEM, which is just as important. Um, so we've been talking about or looking at different things that have to do with uh, motion and force. So the, the STEM scopes activity, STEM scopedia, and then um, the, the content connection that was about the tug of war. Um, and the Discovery Ed video all talked a little bit about motion and force. So I wanted to go through some handy dandy vocabulary cards. So motion, just so we know, occurs when an object or a person moves from one place to another. So you can have motion that goes fast or slow. It can go in a straight line. It can go uphill like an incline, downhill like a decline. It can go in a zigzag um, direction. It can go in a circular motion, like if you think of like um, a spiral, like a marble going down a spiral um, tunnel. So in order for there to be motion, we need to have energy. So in this picture, it says Susie uses energy to push off the ground to make her skateboard move. Energy is the ability to do work. You need energy in order to make an object move. So. We have motion, but in order to have motion, we need to have energy. Force um, is the push or pull of an object. Force makes the object move or change direction. So we've been talking a lot about push and pull. You'll be seeing that on the assignments for this week. Um, when we push, we're using force to make move something away from us. And when we pull, we're using force to bring something closer to us. Um, no matter what, when we use force, it's changing the direction. Work. Um, you do work when you push a friend on a swing. Your force causes the swing to move. So work happens when a force is used to move an object, um, moves another object. So let me say that again. Work happens when a force used to move an object moves another object. So if my friend is sitting on the swing, and I push a little bit, I'm using force. I'm working by applying that energy um, to push her away from me. The harder I push, the farther that she's gonna go. So the harder I work, the more distance I'm gonna get. So another thing that comes into play when we're talking about motion and force is friction. So in this picture, it says the grass will slow down and stop the ball. There is friction between the grass and the ball. So friction is when two objects rub against each other. Friction slows down or stops moving objects. So um, oftentimes when we think of friction, when we rub our hands together, we can feel that heat. That's friction. That is um, creating heat by my rubbing those two surfaces against each other. So if you think about a soccer ball, if I kick a soccer ball on pavement as opposed to the grass, I know that it's going to roll farther on the pavement because there's no friction, nothing to slow down the motion. So when we put it all together, 
um, when we put this all together, we have a force. So the boy is kicking the ball. That's the force. He's working. He's pushing the ball away from him. The motion, the ball is in motion as it's in the air. Then there's something we're going to talk a little bit about in a book. Gravity pulls the ball down, right? So the ball just doesn't keep going up. We know that it comes down. And then the grass creates the friction and it causes the ball to stop. Now this word down here, inertia, we're not going to talk too much about that, but the ball was at rest until the boy kicked it. The ball wants to keep moving once it was kicked, but outside forces stop the ball. So the boy kicks the ball, he applies the energy or the force, the ball goes into motion, it's being pushed away from him, gravity pulls the ball down to the ground, and then once it hits the ground, depending on what surface it hits, that friction or lack of friction is going to determine when the ball will stop to move. Okay? All right. So I have a little book here, um, and I'm just going to skip through. I'm going to read some of it, but skip through some of it as well. Um, it's called Forces Make Things Work. I'm sorry, Forces Make Things Move. And let's just jump ahead to our first page here. So, a push or a pull is a force. Forces can move things farther away or bring them closer. Some forces are very strong. Some are so weak you can't feel them at all. Nothing starts moving until it is pushed or pulled. If you don't push your toy car, it just sits there unless something else pushes it, like the wind or your cat or your big brother. The wind, your cat, and your big brother can all produce force. The force moves your car. Anytime your car is moving, a force made it start. The heavier an object is, the more force it takes to start it moving. If you want to run across the yard, your feet have to push on the ground to get you moving. If you and your big brother decide to have a race, his feet will have to push harder on the ground than yours. Why? Because he weighs more. It takes more force to make him move. Once you're running, only another force can stop you. Your feet push on the ground to make you stop. If you want to stop quickly, it takes more force than if you want to stop slowly. You'll have to push harder. That makes sense, right? It takes a lot of force to start moving heavy things. That's why your living room couch doesn't fly across the room when you bump into it. It's why a breeze can't blow your family's car off the driveway. Other things like leaves and papers and hats don't weigh very much. Even tiny forces can make them fly around. A little wind makes enough force to make them move. But if your big brother is lying on the living room couch, you're going to have to push pretty hard to force him off. I know none of you would do that. Whenever you push something, it pushes back against you. If you push a toy car, it pushes back against you in the exact same force. If you push harder, the toy car pushes back harder. This can be difficult to understand, but it's true. The force you put on the car is always the same as the force the car puts on you. If you push the toy car, your force makes the car start moving. So if the toy car is also pushing you, why don't you start moving? Because you're so much heavier than a toy car. Remember, it takes more force to move heavy things. The force that can move a toy car can't move you since it takes such a small amount of force to move the toy car, and the toy car puts only that much force on you, the force is too small for you to feel. Right? That makes sense. So think about if you were pushing a toy car versus um, a real car, right? So a toy car, you push hard, it's going to go fast. A big, a regular car, a real life car, if you go and push on it, that's going to push back against you. You can't move it. Right? Especially if it's in park. You can't move it. If you push your family's real car parked in your driveway, it pushes back too, just like your toy car. The real car pushes back with the same amount of force as you put on it. If you push the real car gently, it pushes back gently. If you push harder, it pushes back harder. You can't produce enough force to move the real car. 
Neither can your big brother. Sometimes you can see what is pushing or pulling, and sometimes you can't. If you roll your car and it hits a wall or the couch, you can see that the wall or the couch stops the car. The wall and the couch produce force. If your car hits your big brother, you'd better run. They like to pick on the big brothers in this book. Sorry if you can't see the pictures. If the car doesn't hit a wall or your big brother or the couch or a cat or anything you can see, it still stops. What is pushing on the car to make it stop? It's the force called friction. Everything is bumpy. Even things that feel smooth like glass or ice are still a little bit bumpy. You can feel the bumps of glass. They are, you can't feel the bumps of glass. They're too small. And you can't see them either, but they're still there. Whenever two things rub against each other, the bumps on those things rub against each other. The force of the bumps rubbing against each other is called friction. Friction makes moving things slow down. When you roll your car, the bumps on the floor push against the bumps on the car's wheels a little bit. This friction is the force that stops the car. Here we can see them skating on the ice. We know that that ice is very slippery and we run when we run and slide, we can slide for a while because there's less friction against our feet as opposed to if we run and slide in the dirt, we can slide for a little bit, but that dirt causes too much friction and it stops us. If you push the car along a shiny wooden hallway, it rolls much farther than if you push it along a thick bedroom rug. The rug is bumpier than the hallway. It creates more friction. It makes this car stop more quickly. So that makes sense, right? What if you roll your car across very slippery ice? It will go even farther than it does on the shiny wooden floor. The ice is so smooth that the force of friction is very small. But even if there, the car isn't touching anything, even if you pretend it's an airplane and you throw it in the air, it still stops moving. It falls to the ground. Two forces stop it. One is friction. Even air has a small amount of friction. And I bet some of you are guessing what that other force is that causes it to stop. In space, there is no air. So in space, there is no air friction. If you were an astronaut and you threw your toy car into space, no friction would slow it down. Your car would keep going forever unless it ran into your rocket ship. The second force that stops the car is called gravity. If you drop the car, it falls. Why? Why doesn't it stay up? You haven't thrown it down. You haven't pushed or pulled it, but it moved. So some other force must be pulling it down. The force is called gravity. Gravity is the force that every object has for every other object. Confusing. You have gravity. Your big brother has gravity. If the two of you are standing on opposite sides of the room, you both have a tiny amount of gravity pulling you toward each other. You never feel the force from this gravity. It is much too small. You can't feel your gravity between each other. The gravity force between any two objects depends on how much they weigh. Most of the time, gravity is a teeny tiny force. When you hold a carrot in your hand, there is a gravity force between you and the carrot, but you'll never feel it. There is a gravity force between your, your big brother and your cat, but neither of them cares. You can feel the gravity between you and another object only if either of, of either you or that object is really, really huge really huge, like the size of the entire Earth, the whole planet. Everyone can feel the Earth's gravity. It's a big force. The Earth's gravity pulls you and everything else on or near the Earth down. It pulls things toward the center of the Earth. We know that, right? If you dug a deep hole and dropped your big brother into it, he'd fall until he hit the bottom. The Earth's gravity would pull him all the way down. 
The Earth has so much gravity that when we say gravity, we're almost always talking about the Earth's gravity, not the gravity between you and your big brother or the gravity between a carrot and a cat. Gravity is such a part of our everyday lives that you probably don't even think about it. If you spill a glass of milk, you expect it to spill down onto the floor rather than up onto the ceiling. If you let go of your toy car, you expect it to fall to the ground. If you throw your car across the room, you expect it to end up on the floor, not suspended halfway up the living room wall. Sorry, it's kind of glary in there. Gravity is why apples on trees fall down to the ground instead of staying up in the sky. Gravity makes it hard to throw baseball all the way to the moon. It's why your parents' cars stay on the ground instead of soaring through the air. It's why rockets to space have such huge engines. The big engines make enough force to be stronger than gravity. Forces are, all, forces are all around us. Forces make things go faster and slower. They make things stop. They make things start. Forces get things moving. And that is the end of that book, Forces Make Things Move. So hopefully that's making you think a little bit more about forces and motion and all of that stuff that we're going to be chatting about over the next few weeks. Um, I want you to think about a couple of things. So as you're doing different activities today, I want you to think about what motion are you using um, when you do different actions. For instance, if you are outside and you're bouncing a ball, what kind of forces are you using? Um, what, um, what do you use when um, you do a handstand? When you're, when you're going into a handstand, what forces are you using or what motion? Um, what kind of energy and work are you doing as you do those actions? When you're eating your food, what kind of um, motion are you using there? Is it a push? Is it a pull? Where are you using the force? Um, and how hard do you have to work? I guess it depends on what you're eating. So um, I also want you to think about types of friction that cause a motion to stop. Right, we know frictions when two things, two surfaces rub on each other, but what other types of surfaces might slow something down? So if you had a toy car and um, you were experimenting with different surfaces, what types of surface would cause your car to go slower? Okay, we know carpet would definitely make your car go slower if it would go at all. At all. Um, so anyways, be thinking about those things. Um, Try and get on to whatever activities I have for you. Um, get on to Daily DE if you can and, and um, maybe find some exciting things to do. Um, and stay safe. Keep your distance from other people. And I can't wait to see all of you soon. I miss all of you very much. Um, and it looks like my story put my helper right to sleep. All right, guys. Miss you all. Bye-bye.